Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery, and we're in part 247. We're looking at events in the heavens. Scripture teaches, along with the events on earth at the beginning of sorrows, will be an astonishing <coughs> series of events in the heavens. Turn to Luke 21. Verse 11. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilences, and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. So we see along with the events taking place on earth, they're going to be eclipsed by events taking place in the heavens. What are the heavens? Scripture teaches the heavens are a series of stretched out regions <coughs> over the earth. Turn to Psalms 104 verse 2. Who covers thyself with light as with a garment who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. So the heavens were <coughs> regions that were created <coughs> and then it was stretched out. They weren't spoken into existence, they were constructed like the earth and then they were expanded. We see this principle repeated. Turn to Job, the ninth chapter, verse 8. Yes, the Lord is, is covers thyself with light as with the garment. Mm -hmm. So, if he's covering himself with, with light, what is his substance before he covers himself with light? Well, he is light. <clears throat> but he has... <clears throat> when John sees him in Revelation, it's not one light. He sees a prism of lights emanating from a figure seated on the throne. So he has light, he has levels of light, he has intensities of light. He is the essence and quintessence of light, what we call light. Everything he creates is light. He lives in light. So the medium of eternity, righteous eternity, is light. So the word many stages. The yes. word covering is to tell us that he is light. Yes. Not that he's adding light. Well, it means basically that he's not one single <coughs> essence, that he is a multiplicity of the element of light. Right. And in that respect, he varies light intensity. You could, John describes it was so intense he couldn't describe what he was seeing. Gotcha. We actually have an aura around us, and there's, they have various instruments that can detect the aura, which is light. Yes. And so each one of us manifests light. Um, at some level. Yes. Yes. Everything. Everything that's is alive. Stages of. Well, grass, life man. is light. Right. Light is just a life expression of the element of light. Death is darkness, the absence of light. Light is life. So when he creates, the life that he creates is his expression of light. And light is evidence of existence that he has created mm -hmm. we live in a death zone oh, I, well what you have here is a pseudo life which is expressed in matter um, Eretz is not light it's matter and in that respect just as before Adam the element that was in gen life was engendered and was water the four elements fire, air, earth and water we live in a matter element 
And everything here is expressed in matter. One of my questions that I forgot yesterday, I remember just now, so I'm going to ask, speak it out. Did Einstein understand the world was a matrix? Like, you know, what it is. To a certain degree, yes. Yes. But that is more explained in... Um, Einstein explained everything in terms of relativity. There are two forms of relativity, and then there's the subatomic element. Einstein saw as a, a matrix that he didn't want to get involved in. Too, too contrary to the laws of relativity that he was involved in. God creates in multiplicity of things. Man is looking at the result, trying to find out what the cause was. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. You have to go to the cause and you can understand the result. But let's go on because you've got a lot to cover here. Job, ninth chapter, verse 8. Which alone spreadeth out the heavens and treadeth upon the waves of the sea. So the principle is the same. God creates a region and he spreads it out and he levels it. It's called the heavens. Isaiah 42, verse 5. Turning to Isaiah, mm -hmm. should we understand in Job nine verse eight that treadeth upon the waves of the sea? Mm -hmm. This is a hidden sea. It could be any sea. Does what's, it specify? What's the implication of mentioning waves? Well, throughout the creation, you can you have seas on Mars. Mm -hmm. You have you know in this respect. You have that. It doesn't st specify. So the inference is that <clears throat> it's referring to a region in the spiritual realm rather than a region in the physical realm. Remember, there's waters above the heavens. Okay. And the great deep is in the heavens. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 42, verse 5. <clears throat> Thus saith God the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth, that which cometh out of it, He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. This should be a principle that should be taught in the church about the creation. But instead, they, they don't go here to do anything because they can't comprehend it. And so what they what they feel they can't really adequately explain, they just pass over. The right. so whole body of Christ has been robbed of the beauties of what the scripture is talking about. That's why you have the gathering. See, the God's going to allow the prototokis to be robbed of its heritage. We have scientific principles, Father, or Josie, that will... You can, you can use them and they will lead you into understanding if you don't stop. The Bible has never been put under scientific principles. It's just a book and you read it and you either get it or you don't. That's, there's no analytical process to the Bible. So everybody has this, this understanding of what the Bible is. It's a book, okay? So everything's in the book. But, but there is no impetus to study. Study to show yourself approves what the scripture says. Not read, study. Go to analyze, look, seek. Seek and you shall find, the scripture says, you know. If you put it through a scientific analytical process, you will come to understanding that nobody else has had, but they won't do it. Of course not. 
they did, then they wouldn't remain authoritative right. over you. But let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture teaches the heavens and their occupants were hidden from the earth by fabric made by God. Isaiah 50, verse 3. I clothe the heavens with blackness. That's the darkness mm -hmm. that you hear about in Genesis first chapter. And I make sackcloth their covering. That's the space-time fabric. So he makes, he's covering the blackness? The blackness is the absence of light. The sackcloth is an element, a garment, that separates the heavens from the earth. Okay. It's a uh, a condition. It's not a fabric? It is a fabric, but it's a fabric that man can't detect as a fabric. It's like a veil. It's a veil. Man can't detect it, but uh, science has reached a stage where it can comprehend. It causes the space, time, garment, the space-time continuum. It can see it is conditions inherent in what they call space. Should we understand then that the sackcloth, the covering, mm -hmm. is space-time? Space or time. it causes space-time? No, it, like, it is space-time. Okay. <clears throat> and um, they Good understand <laughs> they understand that within the fabric of space time you have different things this is what right. Einstein spent all this time talking about relativity uh, light time all are affected in that fabric mm. and that fabric is wearing out yes if, is, would you describe the fabric as a being because it is sentient isn't it no no it's not sentient no okay no it's condition established by God to effect certain purpose, a temporary condition. Scripture teaches before the day of the beginning of sorrows, before the day of the beginning of sorrows, that we just laid a foundation to give us an understanding of events that's going to take place in the heavens. Before the day of the beginning of sorrows, the heavens and their occupants will begin to be shaken. Haggai, second chapter, verse 6. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. How do we know that that takes place before the beginning of sorrows? Drop down to verse <clears throat> 21. I'm excited. <laughs> mm -hmm. Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. Now turn to Luke 21. <clears throat> Verse 11 again. <clears throat> and 
and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places where earthquakes is mega size most means great shaking <clears throat> and famines and pestilence and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven this takes place on the day of sorrows prior to the day of sorrows you're going to have <clears throat> a buildup which will in essence give you an understanding that this is going to be imminent <clears throat> Luke 21 we want verse 26 uh, no Luke 21 we want verse Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. And when these things, the signs on the earth, begin, begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Why are you told to look up? Because the heavens are going to begin to shake at the beginning of these <coughs> And when you see the shaking, which results in phenomena taking place in the heavens, you know that this, verse 8, is imminent. So the, the shaking will they describe all the different things that will shake, so they will come in shaking order? That's at the result of the, of the climax of it. He's saying when the signs begin to take place, on the earth not when they're taking place when they begin to take place what signs nations being gathered wars <clears throat> being imminent disease outbreaks things that are leading up to this great crescendo of judgment when they begin to take place you're going to see phenomena in the heavens that precede the shaking that will okay. ultimately cause all this stuff happening. So, Mr. Yes. Jones, we're hearing about this. We understand it's going to happen. It's still going to be awesome. And how are we going to react to that? Are we going to be white, scared out of our pants? That's the way everybody else is. Or we're going to at some, we're going to be hidden. Well, just look what he says. When these things begin to come to pass, look up, lift up your heads. You ain't going to be sad or terrified. You're going to be rejoicing. Mm -hmm. Because you know that things are going to happen as the Bible said they are. You know it's not going to affect you. It's going to affect everybody else. You know you're going to be protected. You're going to be hidden. According to <clears throat> Zephaniah. So the last thing that you would feel is ter terror or fear. You're going to feel confidence and rejoicing because you are among the wise that can see what's taking place. And knew it was going to happen before it even happened. Sure. You're going to be busy trying to get people to understand what's happening. You have no time for wondering um, and confusion. <laughs> that, that, that's what everybody else is going to be feeling. You're going to feel confidence. You're going to feel rejoicing. It says your redemption. Your redemption draweth nigh. Well, Mr. Freedom. Jones, yes. Unless the gathering has happened prior to this, we are going to be in our same condition. And if we aren't together, then who are we going to be with? I mean, where are the other contemporaries, the other prototokos, Mr. Jones? If we're not with them, we're in, everybody is wondering what's going to happen. No, what's no, next. no. Your focus is going to be central. It's going to be on the Lord. It's going to be on the Holy Spirit. Moving in harmony with the Holy Spirit. You don't be focusing on what's taking place. You're going to know why it's taking place. Mm -hmm. The more you see, the more confidence you have as you can see the thing approaching. And people are going to be coming to you for direction and guidance and understanding. You know that God is bringing the prototokis together at that time, even though you don't see them. The Holy Spirit is going to give us understanding of all things sure. because the Scripture promises that. When you see signs in the skies, disruptions taking place, it says fearful sights 
and great signs, you're going to understand what they, what, what they, the significance of them. And when you understand, <coughs> you're going to rejoice. You're going to be happy. You're not going to be confused or curious or anything. You're going to know because that's the Holy Spirit letting you know what I said here is coming to pass just as I said it would. And it's just a question of harmony and waiting. It says, your redemption draweth nigh. It means that you comprehend that this reality is coming to a close. Mm. You're entering into a new freedom, a new world order in which you are going to, the first will be last, the last will be first. Protocol is going to dominate. All the shackles are going to drop away. And those that aren't prepared are going to be under bondage, but those that understand are going to be free. We've already heard the voice at that stage anyway. Sure. And so, not only that. So my point is, yeah. since we've already heard the voice, we know exactly what it is and, and yeah. its purpose. Yeah. yeah. Um, the heavens, the keynote in all of this. And as you look around, you can see events are already taking place in the heavens. People mm. are hearing noises. They can't see where it's coming from. They're hearing trumpets. They're hearing different things around the world. They're pretty soon they're going to see things. It can happen. It could happen any day. Mm. <clears throat> you keep looking up. He says, when these things begin to come to pass. Well, you've got armies massing all over the world. You've got more <clears throat> machines being geared up. You got, and everybody is saying that they know where this is going. All out war. You got disease epidemics breaking out. You have the, the beginning of what will be an economic calamity. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, the collapse of this system. It's imminent. You have to be a rocket scientist. All you got to do is understand what, what's taking place. People are drinking out of the cup of judgment just as the Lord said, so the signs have to be about to manifest. Have to be. Because God's word can't be broken. Indeed. But let's go on. The heavens will be shaken. As the heavens are shaken, you're going to have a phenomenon take place that people can't comprehend. Turn to Joel, the second chapter, verse 30. Joel, second chapter, verse 30. Mr. Joel, uh, let yes, me ask sir. this question. Sure. Okay. We know about Valiant Thor and we know about Mr. Janus. Mr. Janus mm -hmm. was in Janus, yes, Okay, yes. so now, these guys were sent forth to the human race to tell us, slow down on your, on your nuclear proliferation. Mm-hmm. Where did they come from, Mr. Jones? Seducing spirits. Hmm. Oh, okay. Seducing spirits. So they couldn't have been other species. Why? Because this place is a dumping ground for every degenerate, <laughs> wicked, <laughs> Luciferian creature that is not accepted anywhere else in the creation. So we should understand that no other species, no reasonable other species would want to be near us anyway. To tell us They're anything. hiding right, from. Right. Who wants to get involved with this <laughs> situation? Would you? No. Would you volunteer to come down Absolutely here? Absolutely no. I did. I'm here. <laughs> I, for a long time, I had to deal with. Hey, what am I doing here? Right. Wasting my time? No, it's not happening. Okay. All that stuff, uh, the Adam the Damsky thing, and mm -hmm. all of that seducing spirits. Grey aliens. Luciferians. Okay. Lucifer is running the show down here. You think he's going to allow somebody with some truth? All right. But you can't even open a book and get truth? <coughs> and the book that has truth is just, they, they try to distort it anywhere they can. So somebody's going to come here and give you an understanding. Plus, number one, I have never read a situation where an extraterrestrial ever mentioned the Luciferian revolt. Never mention the fall, never mention anything right, along that line. Right. It's always, well, we are here to give you enlightenment and show you the way. Well, you're the cause of what's going on right. here in the first place. 
people are being deluded. Anyway, Joel, second chapter, verse 30. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. So we're just going to have a phenomena that are going to affect the heavens and the earth as we enter into this period of the beginning of sorrows. And he says, when you see these things, it means they're going to intensify until the point where they become climactic in their entrance, in their inference. Turn back to Luke 21, 26. Man's heart's failing them for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. That's what he says in Haggai, second chapter. I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth. It's going to intensify to a point where it reaches a crescendo just before he returns for the gathering. So, all humans detect the shaking before they hear the voice, before Jeremiah 25, 30. Sure. Okay. How much before? Fearful sights. Why? <clears throat> Fearful the people that see it and they don't understand. Right. Which great is signs. Great signs to the right. ones who are wise enough to understand. Sign. A sign is, it, is something that's giving you comprehension of something. Okay. So that's right now. Exactly. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> turn to Isaiah... 51 that work I'm going back to uh, <coughs> the concept of the space-time continuum the veil the uh, fabric if you will that's covering everything Isaiah, what? Isaiah 51 okay. verse 6 Look up your eyes to the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. So the space-time continuum you're looking at now, there's going to come a time it's not going to be there. God's going to take it down. He's going to dismantle it. So not that it's just going to wear out to uselessness, he actually removes it. Yeah, he's going to remove it. The wearing out talks about basically <clears throat> the matter duration of the universe is wearing out. You see these black holes and mm -hmm. all the rest of that? It's uh, He says it's a cloth. Like a cloth wears out, and cloth wears out, it gets holes. What causes it to wear out? Age. Corruption. Corruption. <clears throat> and because it's not made intent to be eternal. Yeah, it's all right. temporary. Right, right. <clears throat> but before that happens, you're going to see people are going to be walking around one day and all of a sudden, bang, it's gone. What was that word? I keep forgetting it. Where muscles wear out. Atrophy. Atrophy, thank you very much. Yes. yes. Well, atrophy is what we're discussing here. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yes. Everything is going to change. Yeah, what we find here, the, the, everything here is temporary. It's a temporary construct, mm. which people are trying to make permanent. Uh, the human mind is so corrupted that <clears throat> it's always wide open to subtle influence, which is not objective. It's subjective. Is the construct the second creation? Um, taken down by angelic beings or is it the word of the Lord that removes it? You mean when the end takes place mm -hmm. and this goes out of being? Yeah. Well, it's on the timer. Okay. At a certain time, it, the elements it just, it just disappears. burn up. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. 
Every day we progress closer and closer to that. So what you have here, <coughs> the scripture is telling us to prepare events taking place <coughs> in the heavens, which are going to radically affect events taking place on the earth. <coughs> we are being prepared for life in the heavens. And unless we remain alert, we're going to miss it. We're going to be trapped here. And in that respect, it means that those that miss it are going to go into bondage. Mm. A bondage they can't extricate themselves from. That's why the scripture tells us when you see these things, be alert, rejoice, expect your progression is taking place to free you from the shackles of the bondage of this thing. When he speaks, when he pronounces a judgment, that judgment is going to be on everybody that's not alert. Mm. It says like a snare. What is a snare? It's a net. Okay. Trap. They're going to be caught up in a bondage they can't get out of. Only the wise, only those that understand what's happening will have the time, <clears throat> the opportunity to escape the bondage that's coming on everybody else. So when you talk to people, to try to let them know when they don't have time and they're willing to play fast and loose understand that they're making their own destiny they're bringing about their own destruction the only escape a person has in all of this is understanding if a Mr. Janice or a Mr. Valiant Thor comes up to you and tells you, this is the way, you know, I come from the future, I want to, and even if the, the very elect, if they're not convinced to themselves, they know God's word, they're going to be deceived out of their That's right. place. That's right. Yeah. If you're going to depend on somebody else, <coughs> you bet you're, you're, you're in a lot of trouble. If you're speaking and somebody is not willing to hear what you have to say, <coughs> I'm not saying that they should just suddenly accept everything that we say. I'm saying that they should test what they yes. hear. Absolutely. And if it's true, then you <clears throat> abide by the instruction of what you've been told. If it's not true, then you trash can it and you go on to look for what you need to receive. Yeah, but you're talking about somebody that has done no study, no no reading in themselves. How are they going to know what to do to test anything? Well, they don't have the mindset. And in that respect, it's a mindset of self-destruction. But they could search the scriptures to see if those things... Certainly, are, and they, but they won't. Them. They choose not to. The people we've been encountering recently, though, have been people who will not test it because they know that by testing it, they will actually learn the truth <laughs> and realize the nonsensical behavior they've had for 50 years is a complete waste of time. Yeah. And they don't, want to, they don't want to arrive at that conclusion. Yeah, well, by not wanting to arrive at that conclusion, they they bring about their own the demise. Yeah. Oh, you don't want to do this? You think you want to hold on to what you have before because you're not willing to let it go and admit that it's been a waste of time? Exactly. Well, what you're heading into is going to be far worse. Mm. Each man makes his own decision. At the end, nobody will have anybody to blame but themselves. Amen.